at five and two. Uh, is Marquette for real, though? I mean, because they got two quality wins, and they're only losses against UCLA and Oklahoma State. Yeah, but the problem is we just don't have enough inventory. We know how a, a Coach Wojciechowski's team play. They're going to play tough and aggressive. You have, I think, the potential with D.J. Carton. Not going to be Marcus Howard, but he's going to run the point, kind of distribute. McEwen can play. He's stepping up. How good can Dar Dawson Garcia mm -hmm. ultimately become to, to, to really galvanize that scoring punch they really need. All right. Uh, what about the upside for these two teams? You know, the Big East kind of that yeah. conglomerate right there in the middle. Who has the higher upside? Which team has the higher upside? Well, I would say Seton Hall because of Mamu. Okay. Anytime you have Mamu Kalas V, a guy that just go get buckets, that demands a double team, that can kind of put his team on his back. You always have an opportunity in the one game scenario, especially when you get to the tournament, to continue to advance. And that's why I say Seton Hall does from that perspective. But right now, as we talk today. Mamu doing his thing once again, coming off a 32-point performance against mm -hmm. St. John's career high. He is averaging 20.4 points a game, 7.4 rebounds per game. Seton Hall has won four straight against Marquette and three straight overall after that one and three start. So mm -hmm. getting it together for the guys. It is almost time for tip-off. Ready to send it out? Want to send it out? My man Lab. Who, you want EC. To er Take it over. Still got five seconds. Do we? Three. Eric Collins. Steve EC. Levin. What's up to have, guys? <laughs> Jimmy, thank you so much. We're going to do it. Downtown Milwaukee, Wisconsin on a Thursday evening. Two clubs with big dreams, both off to good Big E starts. You got the Seton Hall Pirates. You got the Marquette Golden Eagles. And Lab, I'm excited to see Sandro Mamu Kelishvili. Well, think about this, Eric. He's second in the Big East in scoring, eighth in rebounding, 17th in assists. You won't see a more skilled 6'11 big man in the country. For Marquette, coming off a huge win Monday at Creighton. They uh, are using guard play as their key to success. Well, and Marquette with the best personnel and the most balanced attack during the Steve Wojciechowski era with the Golden Eagles. And these three playing in concert, also they're disruptive to opponents with their length and their defensive stoutness. Get ready to tip off. Take a look at our starting lineup sponsored by Jeep Grand Cherokee. Five upperclassmen giving it a whirl for the Pirates. You got Roden and you got Obiagu as your juniors, surrounded by three seniors. For Marquette, they have three seniors, a freshman and a sophomore. DJ Carton continues to impress. Steve Lavin, this is going to be his fifth consecutive start, and so far so good with him as a starter. Yes, against Wisconsin, Steve Wojciechowski gave him the nod, and since he's stepped into the starting lineup, everyone is settled into their role. They're all performing at a higher level. Uh, he's the orchestrator that directs this Marquette attack. Last year, Seton Hall sweeping two games against Marquette. The third game would have been in the Big East tournament before it got canceled. Let's do it. Thursday evening basketball from the Cream City, Milwaukee, Wisconsin, and Marquette starts on offense. Marquette already a pair of huge wins on their resume. Monday, Creighton, and about a week and a half ago against in-street rival Wisconsin. First shot of the game is missed by Theo John. A good idea, though, to go down low, pick up from where they left off in their victory over Creighton earlier this week. Dump down, big fella, Obiaku comes up empty. Yeah, every shot will be contested at the rim. Both these teams this year performing at a high level defensively. A lot of length and size at the rim. First shot of the game, Dawson Garcia, freshman from Minneapolis. He's going to be a good one. Miles Kale all the way to the rim, spins out. So empty possessions for both sides to begin the ball game. And a turnover. Quickly the other way. Mamu Kellis really had a chance for a three-point play. Well, we saw Mamu bring the ball up the floor. There we see him running rim to rim and elevating. Flushing this one home with authority. Chance for the old-fashioned three-point play. And see how quickly off of their defense the Pirates get out and convert to offense. He's been on a tear as of late, had 32. Last time out against St. John's. 
Born in New York, raised in the Republic of Georgia. And both these coaches deploy their personnel in an effective manner uh, to take advantage of matchups, whether it's size or speed. And uh, that's good coaching. From the elbow, Garcia gets it to fall. And you could see Dawson Garcia getting more comfortable with each game. Just getting started less than two minutes into this one. Shot fake. Oh, Roden in the lane, blocked away by Theo John. What's new? Fourth all-time in Marquette history in block shots. And just another example of this improved Golden Eagles defense under Steve Wojciechowski. Clearly his best team defensively that he's had. Wojo now year number seven in Milwaukee. Mamu, Kelos, Vili inside. The free throws goes begging. Layup goes begging and it's rebounded by Garcia. An impressive front line. Garcia 6'11". Theo John 6'9", but stout, broad shoulders. So they come at you in different ways in terms of their front line. John, that's a new wrinkle. He has not missed a three this year. He's a perfect three for three from behind the arc. Well, and he's worked at his shot mechanics, and as a result, Steve Wojciechowski is allowing him to extend his game, expand his role offensively. Three-pointer. Yeah, pretty basketball there. Mamu heads up. Uh, a willing passer and playmaker. See a little three-quarter press by the Pirates. Just a little resistance, not gambling or trapping in the backcourt, uh, but just trying to slow down and affect the rhythm of this Marquette offense. McEwen surrounded and forced to travel, so a turnover gives it back over to the Pirates. There's Steve Wojciechowski, now in his seventh season. Sitting on 120 wins, starting to move up the rankings all time with Marquette basketball. Well, Steve Wojciechowski pushing all the right buttons this season in terms of his rotation, his substitution pattern as we see Mamu again with that dribble, exploring and probing and then attacking, gets himself to the foul line as a result. First substitution in the game for either side, Marquette. They quickly go to the bench and bring in Justin Lewis. Not that much of a surprise as Lewis has been a breakout star as a freshman. He'll have that big game-winning putback off the missed free throw. And the game winner against the Wisconsin Badgers in that rivalry game. There he is, freshman from Baltimore. He came in for Theo John. One out of two. For Mamu Kelishvili. It'll be interesting to see, Eric, uh, after that UCLA loss, Steve Wojciechowski elected to go with a seven-man rotation, and the results were terrific in that game against Creighton. Uh, they seemed to have better flow offensively. Uh, conditioning wasn't a factor. They got stronger as the game went along and really played their best half of basketball in the second half against Creighton on the road. Well, they're going to have to worry, work that out. That's already three turnovers, less than four minutes into the game. Straight on look. One and done rebound at Carton. Carton, the transfer from Ohio State. Step back three. Kale looking for help. This is Roden. <laughs> you like Roden's game. Yet the clear example of someone from each year that's improved. You know, three points his freshman year per game, nine as a sophomore, 14 here in his junior year. So player development on display, and he's earned the minutes and uh, the freedom he now is given by Kevin Willard offensively. 14 points, 7 rebounds per game for the junior from Long Island, Jared Roden. <laughs> oh, and a friendly roll on June. Uh, he's got those good shot mechanics, uh, good rotation. Again, here's that three-quarter court press by the Pirates. Not gambling, not lunging, not reaching or trying to steal the ball, but instead just 
making their presence felt and taking away that early offensive flow of the Golden Eagles. Already four turnovers for Marquette. None for Seton Hall. Roden thought about it from the elbow. Back-to-back -back buckets, Jared Roden. Pirates are not allowing the Eagles to get the ball in easily, making their defensive presence felt. Seeing Roden's versatility, Garcia back wins one. Ball stays with Marquette, that's Kane. Can't capitalize. There's Roden gobbling up the rebounds. Why not go back to the hot hand? Play three and doesn't have to force. But always a good idea to get touches for a player that's in a good place offensively in terms of confidence. This is Reynolds out into the corner. Kale. And what a start offensively for Seton Hall. Burning up the nets in Milwaukee. They lead 15 to 5 early in this one. Now early string music for the Pirates. Roden with the catch, square. Nice touch. Time out. Great start for Seton Hall on the road. They lead by 10 over Marquette. Well, in the zone, dialing it up from long distance here early. The Pirates are Mamu down low with good recognition to kick the ball out to Miles Kale, who's stepping into that shot. Again, square the feet this time, Roden gets the favorable bounce and Kale squaring one up, but no one within distance even closing out. And why not dial it up? Hey, look at the start. Seton Hall has made five out of 11, while Marquette, they've only taken nine shots because they've turned it over four times. And of those nine shots, they've only made a pair. So Marquette has the basketball. After the timeout, if they can put their best foot forward. Theo John back into the game for the Golden Eagles. He replaces Dawson Garcia. Carton. Nothing there. And good help early by the Pirates off triple penetration. McEwen high off the glass. No, John had it for a moment. It's ripped away by Roden. Tyrese Samuel into the game for the first time for Seton Hall. And a try. That's the game's first turnover for the Pirates. Now Kevin Willard has figured things out with his Pirates. Now in his 11th year, they have gone to four straight NCAA tournaments. Of course, didn't go last year when the whole shebang was canceled. Closing in on 200 wins at the Hall. You have five straight 20-win seasons. They've been consistent, and it's a cohesive approach defensively and then offensively. Uh, it's a smart basketball team. We're seeing that here early. Marquette trying to counter now. Get back to finding their offensive rhythm, not turn the ball over. Kane, much-needed basket for Marquette. Kane with that nice size, ability to play over the top of smaller defenders and has improved is maneuvering off the dribble as well to create shots or create distance between himself and defenses. To call Molson into the game for the first time for Seton Hall. Off the window and in, that's Reynolds. I'd like to see a bank shot on occasion. Somewhere Alex English smiling. John Havlicek, Jojo White. <laughs> Gotta Google those names back in the day. History lesson. Here's Carton. McEwen off to a slow start. Not to like Justin Lewis. Nothing flashy about his game, but he's always in scoring position. And more often than not, either makes a bucket or gets fouled. Yeah, and he's a player that plays with purpose. There's an intelligence that's in play, uh, whether it's defensively, his help defense and awareness in terms of providing help uh, when his teammates are beat off the bounce uh, or offensively uh, being willing to share the basketball and yet in single coverage he has the skills to go to work both inside and facing the basket. Greg Elliott comes into the game. Junior from Detroit coming off a career high 14 points on Monday. 
didn't miss a shot from distance, was four for four from behind the arc in the win against the Blue Jays. Well, Elliott's battled through some injuries and uh, maintained a positive attitude. He's been rewarded, and he's a true spark plug, a microwave, and come off the bench and change the energy of a game. Bad pass picked off by Kane with two hands. Looking like Dwayne Wade there 15 years ago. And there's that length of Marquette. That's why they're improved defensively. Uh, their personnel is ideally suited for man-to-man -man pressure. Look who's in the ball game. That's Bryce Aiken. He splashes a three. We didn't think we were going to see him, Coach. A little sandbag by Kevin Willard earlier today. He didn't so. give us the full scouting report. Kept a couple secrets. That's okay. He's entitled. The transfer from Harvard was expected to be a big deal. Only played seven minutes of the season opener before sustaining an ankle injury. But Bryce Aiken back out there right now. Oh, some good defense here. Kane, anticipation, gets out in the passing lane. The easy jam in the open court. Aiken, welcome to college basketball. How's it feel? Pirates. Big East basketball is sponsored by Jeep Grand Cherokee. Jeep, there's only one. So far, so good for the visitors. Seton Hall leads Marquette 20 to 11. Some great names at Marquette over the years. Doc Rivers, Wayne Wade, two good Chicagoans going up north. And how about Bryce Aiken? Playing just his second game this year, played in the season opener, but hurt his ankle. This guy already graduated from Harvard, was a great player playing for the Crimson, averaged 22 points a night a couple of years ago, but wants to finish his college experience seemingly in the Big East. Well, a great pickup by Seton Hall, and really the transfer portal has become the equivalent of free agency, but in college, in terms of being able to turn your roster over, be able to fill some needs by picking up a player, over 650 players were in the transfer portal this past off season. And a tremendous pickup by the Pirates. Actually, it could be two years of eligibility for Aiken. As this year is just going to be a wash for everyone across the country. Eligibility is not going to be accrued. So you come back the same status you are this year. How big of a deal is Bryce Aiken? Not only had 22 points per ball game, once had a 44-point game. Did that against the Columbia Lions. Here's Theo John. Off the window and in. Old school drop step. Yeah, just the power move. Very comfortable using that bounce as the back down and puts it off the window. Mamu Kalashvili. Good interior pass finished off by Tyree Samuel. I like this pressure by Seton Hall picking up full and then dropping back. They'll mix their defenses, three quarter court press, a little bit of zone, some man to man as well to keep teams off balance. Halfway through our first half, Elliott gets a screen from Lewis. John, another post up. Nolan Ryan, back-to-back -back buckets. Wow. <laughs> he can't throw it any harder off the backboard and expect it to go in. No, he found the square. That was the key. It was accurate. A lot of dribbling for the 6'11", Mamu Kalashvili. Now Roden. Remarkable at six foot eleven how often he can do the pirouettes, the spin dribbles, and that is usually something that's not encouraged at six foot eleven. Uh, you know, turning your back on the opponent in terms of defense. Oh goodness! High up the window. That's McEwen. I guess the seniors earned it. A little happy birthday. Why not? Yeah, McEwen shooting a better ball this year. Had a hand injury last year and just never really got going shooting percentage-wise. But this year, shooting a great number. 50% across the board. 42% from behind the arc. Catch and shoot road. Put it off the backboard again. Nice bind. Elliott. 
Seton Hall to lead in the ball, up by seven. Bounce pass in traffic, gets ripped away by Elliott. Numbers for Marquette if they hurry. Missed opportunity. And I don't think Roden sees Elliott. And Roden is fouled and will go to the line. Yeah, Roden switched it just in time to his left hand before Elliott, who was coming from behind, could have ripped it and then used his body well to protect the ball and take it to the cup. And Roden, part of the team last year, led by Miles Powell and others that went 20-9 and nine overall, 13-5 and five in the Big East, tied for first. And a team that had just great success winning on the road, Coach. They won seven Big East Conference games away from home. Well, Miles Powell, Quincy McKnight, it was, you know, veteran team and veteran players that Kevin Willard could rely on. And Romero Gill as well, seven foot two, a uh, presence at both ends of the floor, and another example of player development. He began to gain confidence offensively and really was a force down the stretch for the Pirates. DJ Carton back in to run the point for Marquette. Dawson Garcia also back on the floor. Obiagu into the game for Seton Hall along with Shamar Reynolds, who we were a little bit concerned about. Looked like he got his ankle retaped. Garcia has to fire. Good double there by the Pirates. Forced Garcia to back the ball out behind the three-point line. Samuel the miss fire. Offensive rebound. Obiagu. And it results in a couple of free throws for the Pirates. And the big fella for Marquette. Theo John let the big dog eat. Comfortable putting one down off the window with velocity. And then Mamu one more time with the finger roll. Timeout. Regular season college football coming to a close. Regular season college basketball just getting in full throat. So far so good for the Seton Hall Pirates. An eight-point stiff arm on the Marquette Golden Eagles. 7.22 remaining in our first half. You know, it's interesting, Eric. Uh, the Pirates early in the season played some, you know, competitive games. Uh, struggled, losing three of four. But the last three games, uh, they've caught fire offensively. Tonight again, shooting 50% from the field. And over their last three-plus games, averaging 84 points per game. And so it's a group that's gelling. And you can see they're beginning to become more comfortable in their new roles after Quincy McKnight moved on, Romero Gill, um, and of course, Miles Powell. And one and two for Tyree Samuel. You know, in, in talking to Coach Willard today, right, I mean, he talked about how even he's had to kind of learn how to get shots and where to get shots uh, for this new group. Interior pass, freshman to freshman. Lewis finds Garcia, who is whacked across the forearm. Kevin Willard. Only Honey Russell and P.J. Carlissimo with more wins with Seton Hall. Well, one of the best uh, in the business and a bright future. Uh, relatively speaking, very young for the coaching profession. Hired in 2010 at Seton Hall by... Pat Lyons, who's now moved up to the uh, executive level at Seton Hall University. And if I'm not mistaken, I think Pat Lyons and Kevin Willard even went back to Iona. So there was a relationship even prior to Seton Hall. Seton Hall lead the ball up by seven. Under seven minutes to play first half. This is Molson. Transfer from Canisius. How about that little half hook in the lane? Yeah, and using the bounce, keeping that dribble alive, uh, not in a rush, very poised until he saw daylight and then takes advantage with the hook shot. Carton 
sets up shop. Sophomore from Bettendorf, Iowa, one of the four quad cities. Garcia left alone for a moment, now walled off. Bounce pass of beauty, blocked away, taken away by Obiadu. And a shot clock violation, apparently. Yep, shot clock violation. Wonderful work by Ike Obiagu. Well, Obiagu, one of the many pirates with outstanding height and length. Matter of fact, Seton Hall is the second biggest team in the country. And we're seeing that size being a factor in terms of resistance at the rim. Smart kid, too. 3.9 GPA. He's in Seton Hall's business school. Good job. 3.9. Scholar. Molson made a shot to the paint a moment ago. Trying to do it two times in a row. This time it's blocked by John. Yeah, good reaction. Help defense there by multiple Golden Eagle defenders. Hey, don't push him out. Don't push him out. McEwen. That's an L1. His legs taken out. Still made the shot. Yeah, physical rock fight. Not surprisingly, both these teams keyed up. Conference game, they know one another well. Very significant. They got away with steps there. Another block for John. That's his third block shot of the first half. McEwen. Loose picked up by Reynolds. Let them play it, Connor. I like it. Obiadu knew his limitations. Wow. <laughs> Speaking of rock fights, there's a brick. McEwen knocked to the floor. Here's the spin by Mamu, and just great help by Theo John. A second defender there, able to come over, extend, get the block without fouling. Jamal Kane back into the game for Marquette. Kane McEwen, John Carton. And Garcia, the five on the floor for Marquette. Garcia wants to post up, and he is grabbed from behind. Thought he had a mismatch with Reynolds on him. Yeah, Marquette trying to find their rhythm. One of five from the three-point line, shooting 38% from the field, but let's credit Seton Hall. They've mixed their defenses well. They've trapped. Uh, they've full-court pressed. Uh, they've played the ball screens in different manners, uh, trying to keep Marquette out of rhythm. Out of bounds play goes to Carton in his three-pointer. Just looks out. Nice and bounds play there along the baseline. Well devised. There's Carton with the steal, anticipating well to the passing lane. Oh! Just run down, Eric. The Southpaw Tomahawk, DJ Carton. I like this Golden Eagles team, the resolve and the grit. Now, they're not going quietly into the night. We've got the punch back, the ability to counter punch. Bryce Aiken back into the game. Misfires on the three. And a foul is called on Obiagu going for the rebound. Alert and aggressive this year, Marquette is defensively. And we've seen it on multiple occasions this evening. And that's what fuels their runs offensively. When they get a string of stops or shutouts, it gets them out in the open court you know, where their athleticism can take over. And ball poked away by Aiken. John, the senior, has to hit the deck to pick up the loose ball. Carton will try again. And this time he loses it again. Stolen away by Aiken. And Carton trying to make a play coming back. Commits the foul. So we'll have free throws for Miles Kale. Carton, aggressive, laying on that passing lane. Gets him out in transition for the throwdown. One more time. Coach Willard won't be happy with that.
Mike, my man, thank you so much. It's a five-point game. Marquette trailing Seton Hall, 28-23, 3.43 remaining in our first half. Marquette continues to trouble Coach uh, with the turnovers. Well, and Seton Hall's defense, uh, they've been aggressive, and they've given different looks defensively and been tied together, especially with the on-ball screens. And uh, here's an example as you see Carton try and drive past Aiken. Uh, good poke there by Aiken. Marquette recovers, and they're going to work their on-ball screen action again. But watch Obiagu here, who's going to step out big, level off that dribble penetration, show a crowd. Aiken comes up with the steal. So a good smother or swarm, and just showing uh, the equivalent of like eight in the box in football, too. Great running back, not letting Carton have space to maneuver operate. That led to the run out, and Kale got fouled. So two free throws for the senior. The pride of Middletown, Delaware. Three-year starter. Kevin Willard says most dependable, best defender on the club. And, back up to seven. and there are a number of excellent defenders, and that's why Seton Hall is so stout defensively. And again, I like the look on the made baskets uh, there, made free throw. Uh, that full court pressure, just extending. Don't gamble, don't lunge, don't foul. Be disciplined, uh, but disrupt Marquette's approach. And if you're Marquette, you want to counter that with good passing and attack pressure by going coast to coast, attack the rim. Big to big, John finds Garcia. And it's back to a five-point game. No good interior passing there. The bigs playing in tandem uh, like dance partners looking for one another. And that's drilled every day in practice when you break down with post and perimeter position work. Contested shot stick goes through. Jared Roden, how do you do? Now, such a smooth player. Uh, plays with an ease that's unusual for a player his size. Reminds me a little bit at an early stage of Paul Pierce. Wow. Already put him in the Hall of Fame. Paul Pierce out of Los Angeles, Inglewood, Kansas, All-American for the Jayhawks. Long career in the NBA. Oh, my. Look at that shot. Kobe McEwen about four steps behind the arc. Well, I think that McEwen plays at a higher level now because of the other pieces on the floor. It allows him to focus on offense, being more aggressive, spotting up with without the ball for shot opportunities here with the ball. Uh, doesn't even need the screen that Theo John was setting. Sees there's daylight and just enough room to get that shot off and pretty rotation in terms of the backspin. Marquette feeling good about themselves, coming off a win on Monday at Creighton. Creighton, the ninth-ranked team in the country. Two-possession game. The Golden Eagles have battled back well here. Off the side of the backboard. Tough chance, Bryce Aiken. Oh, good defense there by McEwen. Tested that jump shot by Aiken using his six-foot-four length and size. Justin Lewis back in the game for Marquette, spelling Garcia. This is John, pumped in, a little too strong, one and done, rebounded Roden. Aiken playing just his second game with the Pirates, the transfer from Harvard. Let's look at oh. 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 Missed layup by Kale. I didn't get the feet organized, just going a little too fast, hurried the shot. Final minute and a half of our first half. Bad pass by John. Run down. Mamu. Kellis. Second dunk for the senior in the ball game. We're laying on those passing lanes. Marquette needs to close distance between passer and receiver. Also, come to meet those passes. As a size mismatch. And the pass inside to Lewis knocked away, and it's run down by Kale. Extra possession for Seton Hall. Well, an empty possessions for the Golden Eagles. Not getting shots on the rim. Kale! 
Kalu Kelashvili saves it. And John has his pocket picked. And a bad pass. Roden thought that Aiken was somewhere where he wasn't. Yeah, another example there of just being in a hurry, leading to miscues. Mamu running into that passing lane to steal it and send one through. Another angle on this jam. And turnovers have been an issue at times for Marquette. And yet in other stretches, uh, they've really taken care of the basketball and executed at a high level. Uh, but here in the first half, that's something that Steve Wojciechowski at halftime will discuss, taking care of the basketball, getting shots on rim. Gold Deagles holding for the final shot of the half. McEwen slices inside. And that will do it. We have 20 minutes in the books in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. And it is a good start for the Seton Hall Pirates trying to get to 2-0 in Big East play. So the Seton Hall Pirates walking into that locker room with momentum. Mamu Kelashvili doing his thing. He has got eight points. Coming up after the break, Jeep Halftime Report, Mike Hill and Jimmy Jackson. Ready to start our second half. Seton Hall leads Marquette by a half dozen. We've been playing Big East basketball since 1979. And Coach Steve Lavin, more often than not, you get something like this. Two teams not giving an inch. Yeah, not surprisingly, aggressive play in the paint. Officials letting them play. Both teams alert and aggressive in their approach. And uh, you can just feel the palpable energy in the house of uh, the significance when you step into conference play that compressed margin for air on display and that man right there mamu putting up big numbers across the board as we take a look at the stats eric these are our jeep first half stats through 20 minutes neither team shooting a great percentage uh, low 40s for both sides well and it's interesting you know uh seton hall was hot early, knocking down threes, but they missed their last six, so give the Golden Eagles credit. They extended their defense, did a better job of guarding the three-point line, and what didn't Mamu do? A remarkable line, stat stuffer deluxe. He played 19 first-half minutes, eight points. He uh, had four assists, three steals, three rebounds, and he passed out water during breaks. He would have popped popcorn if we had some fans in the stands. <laughs> We're over Redenbacher. Popcorn. Mamu Kelosvili! Oh, he rocked the cradle and threw it through. Well, and I like the call coming out of halftime. Go right back to your hot hand and score, and then get into your full court press. Both teams beginning the second half the same way they began the first half. Starters on the floor. Carton, Kane, McEwen, Garcia, and John for Marquette. Marquette with nine first-half turnovers, and there's another. Ten turnovers, it's led to ten points off of those turnovers and a chance to build on that with these two free throws. Turnover number four by D.J. Carton leads to the run out. Make it these two free throws, and here's Mamu. Just a little ball fake and a straight line drive. Avoids picking up the charge, splits the defenders, just jackknifes between both those Marquette defenders and puts it down off the window. He has excellent mid-air body control for 6'11 athlete. Taking a huge jump. Was an 11 and 6 guy a year ago, and now he's 20 and 7. There's a big difference in the Big East when you get 20 points per game as opposed to 11. And give Kevin Willard credit, too. He's got confidence in Manu and continues to call his number and deploy him on different areas of the floor based on matchups. Slides him inside when he has the size advantage. When he has a bigger player guarding him or draw him away from the basket where he can drive around the big fellas. Sloppy start to this possession by Marquette. Walked away, Obiagu took it away from Garcia. Kelashvili thought he was fouled, no whistle. Marquette the other way. I like the way this game is being officiated. Carton. Kane can't get the follow. Cleared by Obuagu. 
Well, keep in mind, again, this is the second biggest team in the country. Seton Hall, with their size and length, does not allow opponents easy looks on the interior. So someone watching the game may say, why are, you know, the Golden Eagles missing these shots? Uh, you get out there, tough to simulate the length and size of this Pirate team. And a foul called on Marquette. It's on Garcia. Obiagu just stays down, shows discipline, then times the jump. Doesn't pick up the foul. Here we take a look at the top five in terms of size. And of course, Obiago started his career at Florida State with Leonard Hamilton, who knows a thing or two about recruiting. No doubt about that. Players with height and size and skill. First two minutes in the books here in our second half. It's been all Seton Hall. Good fight. Mamu Kelishvili, his own miss, corrals it, and the ball turns over. Kane on the run out. Ooh, too much over dribbling there by Seton Hall, and Kane takes advantage. Elbow extended. The Q had missed everything. Quickly into the game, Justin Lewis gets some playing time, and it's much needed. That's the first field goal of the second half for the Golden Eagles. Well, we were talking about it during halftime off air. But Getting Lewis touches, good things seem to happen for Marquette. And he'll go get the ball on his own in terms of offensive rebounds. But uh, well served to get him touches. Jared Roden, a three-pointer. And the lead is now 11 for Seton Hall. And nothing but net on that shot by Roden. It's a shooter's eye accuracy of marksman from long range. Roden's now got a game high 13 points off the window, DJ Carton. That's just his second field goal. But there's that change of pace where he'll lull defenders to sleep with the hesitation, the change of pace, and then the acceleration, uh, the blow by. Seton Hall, they won their first Big East game. That was against St. John's. This is their first Big East road game. Roden lost it on the way up. Left alone. Parallel three-pointer, Jamal Kane. And a good look by Carton to pass the ball through the air, up the floor to Kane. The pass is faster than the bounce if you want to advance the basketball. Kane won a three Golden Eagles with seven points on the nose. Off the window, squeezing it in, Jamar Reynolds. Now diminutive in size, but low to the ground in terms of center of gravity, has a good base. And that served him well on that stop and shot off the glass. Marquette playing without Dawson Garcia. And the offense starting to come alive. DJ Carton, everything but down. It's Reynolds up high. Mamu, Kellish, Feely. Did he dribble on the end line? He did. Unforced error. Marquette basketball down by eight. Roden with the swish. Kane right back at you. The counter punch. Bottoms. Timeout. There's only one. Eight-point lead for Seton Hall. 15-18 remaining in our second half. How about Jared Roden? Well, excellent shot mechanics, working well without the basketball. His teammates working in concert to get him the ball in the operational area where he can go to work. And versatility is the name of his game. Take a look at his improvement from year to year as well. And that's getting in the gym. Working at your skill development, adding tools to your offensive arsenal. And, of course, Coach Willard calling his number more frequently as a result. Greg Elliott into the game for Marquette. He's the only Golden Eagle who has played who has not scored. A relatively tight rotation for Marquette. It's only gone seven deep this evening. Spin with the left hand. Theo John. Oh, shot of the night for the senior. 
Difficult shot for John. And I like the fact Marquette goes down low to the anchor, the oak tree. And here's the bounce, single coverage. Feels where Obiagu is, reads it well, finds daylight, and left-handed, excellent release off his middle three fingers. Whether it's a jump shot, a free throw, or a hook shot, uh, the rotation, the release, so important. That's what puts the touch on the basketball. Opposite hand from about eight feet out. And another example of someone that from year to year has just gained more confidence. Now we got official review. There were bodies flying. And was it a blow to the head or neck area? Let's see. Under the basket, you saw Molson and Kane knocked up together. And, and Kane hit the deck. Yeah, a little gamesmanship there. Good no call. Not surprising Molson was involved. Kevin Willard telling us he just loves the aggression that he plays with. Mamu Kelashvili was met up high by Theo John. Came down with it and stepped on the end line. Yeah, Theo John and Kobe McEwen, both good awareness, seeing the ball. See McEwen going straight up there with good verticality. Putting the hands towards the rafter as the arms fully extended. A lot to like when you watch Theo John play on a consistent basis. Well, he's the ideal teammate. You know, he enjoys setting screens to free his teammates up for shots. He likes to rebound missed shots. Hey, stay solid, stay solid. He's a willing passer. It's all about winning. Last foul was on Ike Obiagu of Seton Hall. Lewis, the freshman, size mismatch. Went too fast. Molson quickly the other way. Molson at 6'5", broad shoulders, good hands. Helps on the boards. Quarter three, Tyrese Samuel. Give the assist to Mamu Kelishvili. We talked about Mamu. Second in the Big East in scoring. Eighth in rebounding. 17th in assists. Doing it all, the head of the wheel. Ball loose on the floor. Who wants it more? Theo John. And John rolling around on the ground with the basketball. Eventually is tied up. Which may have been a gift. I'm not sure anyone actually touches the ball for Seton Hall. Mamu's teammates, this time Samuel, know that he will pass the ball if he draws help. And his penetration draws opponents to collapse. And that's where he's exceptional. And kicking the ball out to the perimeter. And Samuel, the beneficiary on that occasion. Starts with Theo John. Adam poked away. And look at John get the ball back. And it results in three. Jamal Kane, the triple. Just a heads-up play by Theo John. And does it while on the floor. Able to secure that ball. Give it up. So tenacious. Just wanted it more. And it's a kick ball. Kicked by Elliott. Well, here it is again. John loses the ball. He's on the ground. But great reactions, alertness, presence of mind, and then kicks it immediately to Kane, who's spotting up from the three-point line. Rips the cords. Guy 6'9", 245, giving up his body. And Molson inside is foul. Marquette was hoping to tie him up, but it's a foul call. Kobe, you obviously got to move. Hey, I'm here. Hey, man, I'm going to Second Big East game for both these schools. They're both one and all. Samuel finds Molson, missed the layup. That was Roden, I apologize. And again, look at all these bodies on the floor, Coach. We got the rugby scrums breaking out. Wish we had kept track of that stat. Time's on the floor.
In some leagues, when there's a loose ball, guys try to dribble it out. Not in the Big East. So the possession arrow gives the basketball to Marquette. They're down by six. This was their margin back at the end of the first half. Elliott to the freshman Lewis. Recognition by Lewis, a good dive by Theo John to the bucket. But that is playing in pairs, a tandem, two bigs looking for one another. A lot of dribbling by Roden, and he lost it. It's going to stay with Seton Hall. And this is what Lewis does. As soon as he sees the double team come, as Mamu starts to come towards him, and then Lewis John dives straight to the basket. Now, there isn't the help the helper rotation that Kevin Willard would prefer to have, but that's something they'll watch in film and drill it, rep it next week and get better in that aspect. Mamu Kelich, the lefty three. Bottom of the well. Oh, that was like oxygen. Much needed for the Hall. Pirates back up by seven. Mamu just continuing to splash it through the net. Timeout. Seton Hall wants to keep on keeping on on the road. They lead Marquette by seven in Milwaukee. How about Sandro Mamu Kelishvili? Well, good decision-making on display and uh, the quick reactions, understanding the timely options, and uh, here the hustle to save the ball from going out of bounds. Defense getting into a passing lane for the easy run out and jam one home. Here the back down using the dribble, more playmaking. Tyree Samuel dials one up from long range. The catch and shoot moving well without the ball. Square on the feet, pronation in the wrist. Tickle in the twine. Polysyllabic does a lot of things. 13 points, four rebounds. He's got four assists, three steals. Closing in on the 12-minute mark of our second half. Marquette down seven. I see you're pulling out the thesaurus early. Off the back heel, Lewis gets his own miss. McEwen. Rebound, Mabu Kalashvili. And this is the part of his game that reminds me of Paul Pierce, and we'll talk about that when we get to the other side of the break, Eric. Oh, look at it one more time. Off the bounce, gets to the kill spot. Bottoms, turn up. Offensively, a couple of upperclassmen, Jared Roden, Sandro, Mamu Kalashvili, earning their scholarships on a Thursday evening. Well, Seton Hall, 7 of 14, shooting 50% from behind the three-point arc. Right before break, 16-foot jumper, good by Roden, and he was fouled. This is trying to finish up the three-point play. Yes, sir. And the lead is now 10. Right, just going back to Roden, there's a fluidity to his game. That's impressive. Uh, he plays with a certain ease. And some of the best in the history of basketball had that element uh, that separated it or gave them distinction. Tough break. Theo John called for an offensive foul. Only a bit of foul trouble for either side has been the freshman for Steve Wojciechowski, Dawson Garcia. He's got three personal fouls and has sat for the lion's share of the second half. Hard to know how the officials decide when to call that offensive foul versus other times not calling it. Uh, given how physical the play has been at both ends of the floor. Veteran defense by McEwen. He pulled the chair out from behind Molson. Made him travel. Molson thought he felt him on his hip, and next thing he knew, McEwen wasn't on his hip, but he fell down. We saw him rubbing the sneakers against the floor. Maybe a little condensation was in play as well. 
Dawson Garcia back on the floor for Marquette. Along with DJ Carton. Carton, four points for Turtle. This is Carton. And we've got a foul. A good turn down by Carton. Uh, was under heavy duress on the closeout to the three-point line and wisely put it on the deck and maneuvers his way to draw this foul. Two free throw attempts. DJ Carton has now started five straight games. First game he started was the win against Wisconsin. He was also obviously the starter a couple of days ago in that win at Creighton. So good things have happened with him in the starting lineup. Impressive performance against Creighton. 20 points. Five of seven from the three-point line. Distributed the ball well to his teammates. And now Marquette with a three-quarter court, one-two-two -two press. And then back into their man-to-man -man defense. Manu Kelishvili. Double team, split it, and gets it to fall. He has that knack for jackknifing, splitting multiple defenders and still keeping the eyes on target and finishing plays in traffic. 6'11", 240, and the fact that he's left-handed makes him so unique. And, and usually players rush when they're double teamed or under duress, and how about the counter right back at you? Theo John loving those jump hooks with either hand. Senior from Minneapolis. Up to a great start to this season. Here's Reynolds. Sneaks past Carton. Sets up Rose. Dawson Garcia the rebound. It's his eighth rebound. What a big possession here. Chance to chip away at that deficit. Got it under double digits. Marquette starting five playing together. Fade away, McEwen. Kane saves it in the corner. McEwen missed twice on one possession. And the Pirates got the basketball and got the timeout. Impressive pursuit by the Eagles. So it's an eight-point game in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Mamu down low. Splitting defenders, gets the bounce. Dio John, the oak tree, the anchor. Old school basketball. Fifty-four forty-six. Seton Hall leads Marquette. A series that dates back to 1956, when Seton Hall defeated Marquette in Marquette's first ever appearance in the NIT. Then they didn't play for eons before. Marquette jumping into the Big East. Well, people forget the NIT back in the day was bigger than March Madness of the NCAA tournament. Open look, catch and shoot. Got it! Miles Kale, another assist for Manu Kelishvili. And great hot potato around the horn. Quick passing, precise passing with velocity. And the math is better on the weak side, away from the ball. Ball is kicked, last touch by Marquette. Seton Hall ball. Well, we take a look. A little weave action. This direction, a uh, throwback. And Miles Kale. Nothing but net. Coach, this isn't scientific, but it seems that of the six assists for Mamu Kelishvili, almost all of them went directly to a three-point shooter. Molson, the miss. Uh, and he's the hub of the wheel. And you see the other pirates like Spokes operating, spinning around wherever Mamu has the ball uh, because they know he enjoys sharing the basketball. Wild shot by Kane. Somehow it... Floats through. Yeah, tough take. Gets it back under double digits. Nine-point deficit now. It's about getting stops if you're Marquette. Stringing a series of shutouts, which can lead to runouts. 
Good help defensively. McEwen there coming in from the help side. John was open for a moment. That window closed. Yeah, especially with those looping long soft passes. And from the top of the floor, tough angle to try and enter the post. Seton Hall leads by nine on the road. Seven and a half remaining. And a big part of Marquette's offense that's missing only six free throws tonight. And on the year, they've averaged 25 free throws per game. Last touch by Seton Hall. Seton Hall, they lead 57-48, and they win their second consecutive conference game. Back in a moment. Seton Hall, they lead Marquette by a score of 57 to 48. I know he was only a pro, but Tony Kukoc, former Chicago Bull, used to play like this guy right here. Sandro Mamu Kalashvili. Yeah, I mean, it's been a combination of his ability to distribute the ball, uh, use his size to seal over the top for both passing as well as shooting. And it's been a night of string music, uh, but the assists, very impressive. Uh, career high in terms of sharing the sugar. Six assists, his previous career high was four. Of those six assists, four of them led to three-point field goals. So on the six assists, he has accounted for 16 points. When I go back to, you know, both these coaches considering their personnel, their strengths, uh, their vulnerabilities, and then devising alignments offensively and sets to take advantage of their skill against certain matchups that are favorable. And that's good coaching. How about this? Coming out of a timeout, they set up a play, and Justin Lewis, the freshman, hits a triple. Well, case in point, uh, Steve Wojciechowski pushing all the right buttons. Uh, I'd love to see Justin Lewis get more touches. He's a reluctant scorer at times as a freshman, feeling his way out, but such a talent. He is now five for nine shooting threes on the year. Makes you wonder why he's only taken nine. And Molson steps on the end line. Um, here comes an opportunity for Marquette to build on a run. Carton, again, misdirection, taking the ball hard one way, get the defense to lean, throw back across the grain, and Jalen Lewis stepping into that shot. Gets good legs, his feet were organized, and splashes one through the net. Coach, we talked about it a bunch of games this year. It's clear why Lewis won three straight championships, and he's a high school player. He knows how to play. DJ Carton gets to the rim. We've got a four-point game. Now, this is the counter-punching. So impressive. This Golden Eagle team just will not go quietly into the night. Reynolds walled off, turns around, misfires. Oh, and Maven tapped in by Lewis. I think Justin Lewis by accident tapped it through. The basket will be scored to Samuel. That's a tough pill for Marquette to swallow. Can't afford to be giving up cheapies. And we saw the three-quarter court press by the Pirates. And then dropping back into his zone defense. Yet another look defensively. Oh! Too strong off the window. Seton Hall won seven Big East road games a year ago. That's his 10th rebound. McEwen, Lewis. Cleared again, Garcia, rebound number 11. Well, fresh snow. And get organized, get a good look. Don't have to force the action. And with 5-0-1 remaining, a foul. Just the third team foul of the half for Seton Hall. Well, again, going back to the free throws, Marquette has been proficient, but they've only shot six. They are six of six on the night. On the flip side, Seton Hall, nine of 12 from the charity stripe, and that is the difference in the score at this point in the game. And we have a timeout on the floor. It's getting tight in Milwaukee. Six-point game.
Marquette called that last timeout. They trail by six. Seton Hall, the lead with 5.01 to play. Garcia with a quiet night offensively, but doing the work on the boards. 11 rebounds, a new career high. And we're seeing him continue to become more aggressive in terms of play in the paint. And that bodes well for his future and Marquette's. Caught in the misfire. He's been stuck on eight points. He's been aggressive, though. This kid will not relent. And he gets free throws because of it. Two of them coming for DJ Carson. Carton maneuvering off the balance. You see Aiken there lean some. Didn't extend the forearm. But the officials with the emphasis on freedom of movement and protecting the offensive player, benefit of the doubt, now goes to offense. And that's top down, coast to coast. And officials are graded. If you want to be in the NCAA tournament and earn those extra dollars, uh, you need to adhere to whatever's being emphasized. We may not like it as a coach or as an analyst or when you're having a couple beers in the stands, but uh, they're doing what their bosses are telling them to do in terms of calling the game. And players have to adjust. Four-point lead for Seton Hall. They've led by as many as 11 here in the second half. Shot missed by Aiken. Aiken coming off that ankle injury, playing just his second game of the season. Theo John not in the game for Marquette. Kane leans in with the left hand and it just won't fall. Falling down, nowhere to go. He has bailed out because of the timeout. Boy, some good defense by Molson, just not letting Garcia get a catch. And here we take a look. Could have been a travel, but heads up, got the timeout. I kind of thought that Molson was going to have a big night in uh, Brewtown tonight, but he stuck on two points. I like it. <laughs> But I'm bump. <laughs> All right, a four-point game. Seton Hall, they've proven they can win on the road. This would be a huge get for them. Their next game is going to be Sunday. They're going to be back at home against Providence. Wouldn't it be nice to start 2-0 and on the year and then take on the Providence Friars to go 3-0? and Marquette, they need this one because they've got a real tough one on Sunday. Uh, their next game is going to be in Cincinnati against Xavier. And both teams with new pieces. And so these coaches are trying to build chemistry and cohesiveness, uh, have their groups gel. Uh, easier said than done when there's a pandemic and there's been the disruptions and interruptions to the natural takeoff or lead up into a season. Uh, but high marks for both these coaches and programs as they've integrated new players and also the returning players are in different roles. And uh, to blend is not easy. We should mention that Marquette, once again, playing without uh, Saimir Torrance. Torrance is a big part of what they've done in years past. Uh, sophomore from Syracuse, New York, but he's got that uh, lower leg injury, so he is still not available. Thinking was that maybe he'd be able to go sooner rather than later, uh, but he is out, and that's another big part of what they're trying to do, who will be back in the mix in the weeks to come. And I like the fact that Marquette going with a seven-man rotation. I think you can build better chemistry when you've got a group that plays consistently together. And these seven uh, are terrific. And that's Steve Wojciechowski's call to shorten his bench side. Bryce Aiken getting some late time, court time, in just his second game of the season. Mabu Kelashvili. And on the pass out, there is a foul against Marquette. Just the fifth team foul for Marquette. So no bonus free throws yet. They call the foul to reach in on Jamal Kane. 
Miles Kale came into the game just shooting 29% from the three, but productive tonight, three of four from long distance. And that stretches the opponent's defense, the threat of having multiple shooters behind the arc that can knock down shots creates more space for Mamu to go to work. Setting up another three-point shooter. This is Molson off the side of the backboard. Yikes. Our first UFO, a flying saucer of the evening. Big shot for the sophomore. It's a one-point game. How about it? They just don't go away. The stick to on display. Take oh, it blocked away. Carton oh, took it from him. Johnny on the spot, Molson. Well, that penetration by Aiken brought the Marquette help and allowed that offensive rebound. Interesting to note that Theo John not on the floor right now for Marquette. Their glue guy who's had a solid game. Well, it does give them a quicker lineup and a team that can get out in transition and then run like deer. Garcia, lefty three. Seton Hall up by three. Looking to expand the lead. See how the Pirates spread the floor. Offense starts with a 6-11. Mamu Kalashvili. Now Rote, top of the key. Chance to tie for Marquette. Well, DJ Carton maneuvering up the floor, uses the Dawson Garcia ball screen and gets to daylight and finishes. And then Molson inside, able to slide in and get the putback. A little bank shot in the interior. Three-point game. Lewis guarded by Molson. Now backs him down. Shot clock's at seven. Carton's going to have to hurry. Deep three. From Wauwatosa. And we're tied at 61. Oh, what a ball game. Buck 40 remaining. Marquette's come all the way back. And we've seen that before, Eric. Uh, the resiliency against Wisconsin, that's one of their traits as a team. The comeback hits. Reynolds, no, tapped. Finally cleared by Kane. Marquette's got a chance to take the lead. It's been a month of Sunday since they last were on top. And what a difference. The transfer from Ohio State, DJ Carton, has made for this Marquette team. Turned down that shot. This is the freshman Lewis. A flop a -dapa. No! Offensive foul! Justin Lewis slapped on the wrist. Well, that's been a point of emphasis. Not wanting the flops. Uh, Molson here sold it well, but he did take it. The shoulder of Lewis right into his sternum. And can't fault him for the gamesmanship and falling backwards to sell it to the official. Seton Hall does not have a timeout to work with. Interesting to know. 61-61 time. Somewhere Roger Maris smiling. Final minute of our ball game. Mamu Kelish Vili finds Reynolds! And he hit it! Shavar Reynolds rising from the ashes! The continued playmaking, another assist, a dime by Mamu. Maneuvering off the bounce, keeping the dribble alive, and then surveying the court and making the read, finding Reynolds. Reynolds' shot preparation, excellent here as well. And there is Mamu with the jump stop and the delivery right into Reynolds' wheelhouse or shooting pocket. And this is just ridiculous. Carton here, feeling it with confidence. Oh. Reggie Miller range, the Rifleman range from downtown Marquette, <laughs> downtown Milwaukee. <laughs> so, Marquette gonna have to regroup. 
They came all the way back at one point down by 11 in the second half to tie the game at 61, but now down by three with 34.4 remaining. Uh, because of that last time was called, they have just one more to work with. If you get organized quickly, uh, 34 seconds can lead to three or four possessions. Uh, you don't need to just come down and launch a rocket. Uh, you want to give yourself a chance to get fouled. Now, if it's in rhythm and there's the open three off a of dribble penetration, uh, then nothing wrong with taking a three. But you don't have to force, predetermine, or premeditate taking a three that ends up being a low percentage play and therefore not a winning choice or decision. Just saw that game reset. Marquette will trot out. DJ Carton, Jamal Kane, Kobe McEwen, Dawson Garcia, and the freshman, Justin Lewis. I don't think Kevin Willard will elect a foul with 34 seconds and change, but it's not beyond the possibility. Carton starts up high. Coming off the screen. And a walk! Oh, a quick whistle. A walk on McEwen. That's a tough, tough call. Well, multiple calls here down the stretch that understandably Steve Wojciechowski is not happy with. The bounce shouldn't have been called there. That was a travel. <laughs> Splitting hairs, but I do think that was a good call. So now Mark gets in trouble, and they're going to have to play the foul game. That's the seventh foul, so it'll be a one-on-one -on -one situation for Sandro Mamukelashvili. Again, that back down dribble, able to get right into the gut or the heart of Marquette's defense. And as they collapse, the kick out for Reynolds with that low center of gravity, feet organized, and gets good lift on that shot. That was the only three of the game attempted by Reynolds. What guts. You know, what's tough if you're Steve Wojciechowski is, you know, there are other traveling traveling calls that aren't made. And then with that situation for it to be called, that's where the frustration is as a coach. Uh, if you're going to call that travel late, call it earlier. Two important free throws made by Mamu Kelish Vili. And the lead is five. Still time here. Again, you don't have to shoot a three. And a foul called on Reynolds. I think we need some of the managers here at Marquette to get the towels out there and some elbow grease because it appears there's some condensation. Different areas of the court, which is not only dangerous in terms of potential injuries, but can lead to a turnover. And a foul before the ball is inbounded as Garcia is held. Looks like Road may have held him up some. Not what you want. You want to keep that clock going, not stop the clock, give more possessions. Carton gonna have to fire. Rebound to Garcia. Crawls it through. It's a one possession game. Three point ball game, 12 seconds remaining. And Marquette burns their final timeout. So both sides, no timeouts, no way to stop the clock from here on out. We will take a quick timeout. We'll be back with the final 12 seconds, I promise. Here's your game reset. Neither side with a timeout. It's a one possession game. Seton Hall leads by three. Both sides are in the one and one. Common foul, and it's a one and one free throw situation. Want the five second call or a quick trap? There's the foul. Reynolds is fouled in the backcourt. He'll stride to the line. He has been a good free throw shooter in this his senior season. Has not attempted a free throw this evening, but he's 15 out of 18 at the stripe on the year. One and one. Neither side can call a timeout. Gutsy. 
like a gentleman. And the lead is four. See if Seton Hall here, if the ball goes through the net, if they show three-quarter press just to make Marquette use a little more time in advancing the ball. Lewis has to fire. And that should have done it, but the whistle blows and we're still going to play the final half second. It's going to be a Seton Hall winner, courtesy of Shavar Reynolds, who we talked to Kevin Willard earlier today, said never in his imagination did he think that Shavar Reynolds would start for a Seton Hall Pirate team. But now as a senior, he has not only started, but he has excelled in that role. He has made a three in the final minute of the game, and he just made two free throws to ice it. Well, and it's a group that continues to improve. Uh, they've been their last four games now stringing together really impressive performances. And Marquette, uh, a great run to get back in this game, to tie it up, showing their resiliency, their mettle or character. And they're going to be a handful. Uh, don't be surprised if Marquette doesn't finish in the top four of the Big East. And their team that will make the NCAAs and may win some games in the NCAA. Two beauties by Shavar Reynolds, who scores the last seven points of the game. A tip of the cap to him. He's got gravel in his guts and spit in his eye. Seton Hall wins their fourth in a row. They're now 2-0 and oh in Big East play on the year. Your final score on a Thursday night from the Milwaukee. Seton Hall 70, Marquette 63. For my partner, Steve Lavin, I'm Eric Collins saying good night, everybody.